screen recordings rather than just recording the video. Mm -hmm. So that if I get a text message or if I think of something, my thought process is documented in the sense of how I navigate this interface that is important to our okay. particular culture. But. <laughs> Now, I got I was stationary too long, but <laughs> it was it was a cool, literally a cool run. But yeah, um, it's great running in the rain. I definitely nice. because I because I do this every day. I've been I get recognized now, and I see some of the same people in the same spots. Mm -hmm. And there's a particular dude that is by six points in a wheelchair that he just fucking called me over, and I. I went over there and I hung out with them, just catching my breath, and they were talking about my pace and how fast I run, and then uh -huh. this one guy was like, when I was locked up, this, that, and the other thing, there was this Mexican dude, he'd run, he'd run for two hours like that, and then do a, an hour ab workout, and then uh -huh. th there's just this banter in relation and, like, a lot of gold teeth. Uh -huh. it, it was, one of these days I'll have a gold tooth, but, <laughs> um, there's, I have a silver tooth, but it's way back there. Oh, really? It's silver? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I want like a, you just a, can't see it. a gold canine or something, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> so they, they're, they're telling me about these dudes, and I don't know. It's, just, it's sort of, you know, uh, Rocky Balboa and Philly running back and forth, and the neighborhood gets behind it because they see him doing yeah. this every day, and they understand right. he's got that drive and mm -hmm. they're rooting for him even if it, they don't even understand that he's yeah. doing whatever and then you know hometown hero fighting Apollo really good stuff yep. and then so that's that reinforcement it, it makes the run so much more enjoyable because I if I'm feeling a little shitty I'm starting to wane a little bit and starting to hurt on a run and then I get I get a like Helps to see. I get a shout out from a dude yeah. in a wheelchair yeah. saying, keep at it, you know, and my pace, my pace lengths, my, my, my stride gets uh, wider and my, my, my cadence picks up. Yeah. You can't, for me, I can't stop if I know someone's watching. Can't, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So, so I'm that's gonna, a good way of keeping you going. Oh, and then I, uh, this, these, it's weird wearing these because they suggest things that I'm not because these are fighter shorts yeah but I noticed I, the front flap yeah they're, they're, they're for being able to kick and stuff well that and you know, the around the, the belt his velcro and yeah stuff like that. these are good I like them because I don't have to wear underwear with them mm -hmm. but these are from Donnie and I acquired them because he has a superstition kind of thing a lot of superstition in competitive folks but he lost his first professional fight in these, hmm. and he was, I'm never wearing them again. Really? So he gave them to me, and I've always not been, I've not been comfortable wearing them. But something about that provenance made me want to wear them today, and I'm feeling hmm. like, all right, that sort of failure mm -hmm. and, and whatnot wants me to kind of, the, the object is strong, and I want to rejuvenate them, you know, Yeah. Uh, sort of a phoenix yeah. aspect of bringing Rises. them back to life. Rises. And I don't know that Donnie's going to do any more fights. I, don't, I think he may have stopped, but for a while, that's, that was his main, main drive. So. Who's Donnie? Donnie Ooten. Forgot? I he, before. he and I were the the two recruits at Virginia Tech of our year. He okay. was a top ten. I was I was top twenty, maybe according to USA Wrestling Magazine, I think. Um, but Donnie had a much more substantial accolades than I did. But. We basically grew up with he and I being familiar faces and, and 
because we were both Virginia boys, and both of our dads took us around and understood we had to go across the country and go to these big competitions and get our asses kicked. And Donnie was definitely more successful than I was. And uh, you just, you know, uh, <clears throat> just having gone through the same things and we became buddies pretty easily. He was a huge asshole uh, when it came to how he, how, he, how he wrestled though. He was definitely meaner, more asshole-ish than I was. I, uh, I had a different sort of decorum with my presence on the mat, whereas he, he was definitely more punk, you know? Yeah. Poke your eyes, cuss, cuss at you, kind of, whereas I was just the glass-eyed great white shark of sense <laughs> of like just being there to kill, but not doing any, no, Donnie was not above poking your fucking eyes and calling you a fucking faggot while you're wrestling them, you know? Like, yeah. fuck you, and then punching somebody. Gets in somebody's head. Which got him in a little trouble later on in his uh, career. But that, that like, fuck you, I'll, I'll punch you kind of mentality was one reason why he was so fucking tough. Um, but it did get him in a little trouble. It, it, it's basically what got him kicked out of D1. His mouth? His attitude? His, uh... Just... Fight quality. Um... We were... Because we were young... And we were smaller... Especially me. I was too small for college wrestling. But Donnie, well, Christiansburg is right by Blacksburg. 15 minutes, 20 minute drive. And another Iowa guy was the head coach there. Mm -hmm. So we had a good r rapport, I guess, in the sense of being from the same programs as far as what, what not. So Donnie and I and a couple others went over there because he needed a proper transition into the high school versus college wrestling. Different fucking sport, man. It's not the same at all. Yeah. And it was very, very, very hard for me to adjust. Less so for Donnie, less so for some of the other guys. But So we're over there. God damn it, I can't talk into this. <laughs> We're over there. And I can't see you. All I can, all I can do is hear you. We're over there and uh, we're in the Christians Brew wrestling room and Tom Brands, who's an Olympic gold medalist, who's our coach, who's also the Olympic coach for several Olympics. But <laughs> so Donnie and I are wrestling around and we're probably hung over too. I'd say that was my most difficult transition into college wrestling. Was being able to fucking get fucked up every night that I wanted. Mm -hmm. But so we're in there or in the morning. Donnie's having a hard time with a super stud high school guy by the name of Matt Epperly. It's probably not going exactly how Donnie wants it to go. Kids giving a good fight. They're scrapping back and forth really hard. I don't know who's getting the better better of whom, but it's it's a it's a it's tough. Yeah. And of course, 
there's that the, the the testosterone starts going and Donnie loses decorum and punches him <laughs> fucking fucking punches him in the fucking teeth and and breaks his fucking teeth oh, and this high school kid high school kid is like Ugh! And, and I see him run out of the room holding his face, he's bleeding and like has chunks of teeth in his fucking hands mm -hmm. and Tom Brands is like he's about my size little, little, little meteor probably but he's a, a little man <laughs> he's in blue jeans and, and like work boots <laughs> and maybe a polo shirt or something really tacky mm -hmm. and he sees this happen and he he gets so fucking mad, and he and 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 he hops right in, and just beats the ever loving shit out of Donnie for the next like forty five minutes, just fucking like from one end of the room to the other, because he's well, it's super hyper threaded in the sense that he's excited that he's got this guy that has that kill mentality that impulsiveness that just has to like just that mm -hmm. so and then somewhat well rather pissed that that he shit the bed so to say for someone helping them out and being mm -hmm. in a, a situation where we're guests mm -hmm. and then I mean he it was just like a pit bull grabbing onto somebody's throat and Tom Brands just went from like I said, from one corner of the room to the next, <laughs> and we were, I, I remember, I remember we were, we were wrestling, everybody's just sort of going through the motions just to watch Tom Brands beat the <laughs> shit out of Donnie, <laughs> and our, our jaws are on the ground because <laughs> an Olympic gold medalist was breaking fucking bad yeah. on a 19-year-old boy, <laughs> and it was a whipping. <laughs> it was a fucking whipping. And Don Donnie would tell a pretty similar story. Epperly would tell about the same. Uh, Epperly went on to wrestle at Virginia Tech too. Mm -hmm. um, I think Epperly and Donnie have since sort of hashed it out. But they were definitely a little awkward with that. <laughs> Don Donnie's had s similar not as catastrophic in the sense of breaking people's teeth like that. That was just kind of a freak deal. Where if... Yeah. I, I mean, Donnie's so. punched me wrestling him before. Uh, and it just... I just... It did, I didn't respond the way he wanted. In the sense of getting flustered. Mm -hmm. It made me... Donnie was just too big for me to, to do much with. He was a good 20 pounds bigger than me at all times, but... Definitely a bad motherfucker. But, yeah, I don't think he's fighting anymore. So, Mark Strickland, another legendary yeah. figure. He was, a, he was an Olympic alternate, I think. But I've mentioned him with you before because yeah. Chuck Palinup happened to come across Mark Strickland when he was training for the Olympics. Okay. And he mentions Palinuk and another ODU guy, I believe. Forgotten his name. I'd have to look it up. A guy that I've hung out with a few times. Um, definitely extreme personalities, man. Extreme. And Strickland being one of the most extreme. And Palinuk does a pretty good job of giving a a snapshot of a a wrestling environment as well as the competitors hotel stays and throwing a towel under the door and sweating and making sure you're on weight I don't know if he gets into the the fear and loathing side of it as much because it's there. 
Have you started writing anything? No, but I'm definitely getting into that headspace because, like, uh, yeah, the fear and loathing aspect of competitive wrestling and mm -hmm. especially coaching. Especially coaching. Mm. Uh, but I was definitely not that much. I mean, fuck, speaking of Christiansburg, that Wild West aspect of making a, a national caliber team mm -hmm. out of a bunch of redneck motherfuckers mm -hmm. like Grundy or Christiansburg. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, man. You just have to... I mean, it just is, is not fair, but you have to... the wild bronco putting reins on a bronco and bucking letting it buck uh, it takes some settling there my buddy which you met he was more or less recruited and given you know was given arrangements with his parents and and whatnot of oh well, we'll get him, we'll, we'll change his address, we'll put him here, we'll, I'll check in on him type thing. 17-year-old mm -hmm. living with other 17-year-olds in their own house as high schoolers, mm -hmm. you know? They did whatever the fuck they wanted. And so long as they went to school enough days, it was okay. So long as they weren't, they were fucking crazy. We're just talking about 17 year olds. They were a lot of uh, extracurricular activities, to say the least. And he would talk about getting in trouble and having to go on runs. And the, the coach would either do like a thing where somebody was driving a van and he was like in the back seat with a megaphone huh? <laughs> type thing almost like row row yeah. or he'd be on a bicycle with yeah. them just I mean giving you what you needed to do more whether it was abusing you verbally or lifting you up verbally giving you what you needed or what he may have felt he needed to get out of his own system. But he would talk about doing stuff like that with a head full of acid, and not having slept for two days, and, and loading up to it. He was, he was shooting up already at this point. Like, and meanwhile, he's national caliber, possibly getting prepped for getting looked at for international competition, getting attention from people, being like, well, we, can, mm -hmm. we can, you know, maybe look into him for being on a world team. Mm -hmm. He was just a little bit too small, smaller, smaller than I am even. And uh, it's uh, kind of unfortunate in those guys that really blaze the paths, mm -hmm. not having, the, well, having less of a support system and because they're 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 trailblazing going left right forward back whatever the the the, the next step after you've done the high school thing you either just get shoved to the side forgotten about or just ignored and now it it's more of a feeder program where you've got more of a People are coming there because, all right, there's going to be a college opportunity. There's going to be be that. But so I get a little bitter about some of that, in the sense of the exploitation of those kinds of personalities in the Wild West thing. Um, that may be what I try to write a little bit about because. These were guys, I, I, it's, Blake will put it lots of times, just like I, I've, I've mentioned with you, is 
Yeah, we were second generation wrestlers. That makes a big difference too. Second, third generation wrestlers make better wrestlers. Why? Because the fathers know what they're getting into. They As know. As opposed to third. They there there's going to be less um, friction in the training and worry. You're going to have more of an alignment when you leave the practice room and you go home mm -hmm. and the father understands that he has to make weight and yeah. stuff like that whereas first generation wrestlers first of all they have to explain to their parents that it's not professional wrestling and it's not fucking Hulk Hogan yeah. shit like that and the discipline is foreign it's a very foreign sport. So that's second, third generation. Any sport, I think, is going to have a positive impact. The psychology behind it, the, all of that. That said, I don't know that I'll let my fucking kids wrestle. <laughs> if they want to do it, they'll do it. And I'll, like I said, it's binary. Either I'm going to be coaching or not. So I have nothing to do with it now. You can't halfway it. Shit.